thank you for coming online and talking to me this evening. And I'm just sorry that we can't meet in person in the gallery. Yeah. Hello, Sarah. I'm also very, very sorry that I cannot come to Ireland. But yeah, it's what it is. So you were over visiting in 2018, is that right? Yeah, two years ago. And I was, you... uh, I was doing a glass workshop in Northern Ireland uh, with uh, Andrea Svensson. And uh, I had a good time. And then I thought, well, I also do two days of uh, Belfast. And then I visited our space. And you got speaking to our Robert? Yeah, there was no exhibition. <laughs> and I talked to Robert for a long time. <laughs> so that was very nice. And he was talking about uh, the Linden Biennale, who was planned for last year. And yeah. I said, well, I really have a nice work which would fit in that one. So he said, oh, please send some pictures. And then uh, we talked to each other. And then, of course, uh, the Linden Biennale was uh, stopped because of the COVID. And then he sent me a message, uh, do you like to have a, a, a personal exhibition? I said, well, yes. Nice. Yeah. That's brilliant. And that brings us to now. So can I just ask you, um, could you give us a little bit of background about how you how you've got to this place? I have been um, from from um, from the beginning of my life, I've always been working with uh, fabrics because fabrics. Yeah, that well, the touch and all the other things. So I was making a uh, first for my dolls. I was making clothes and then for myself and then um, from the from my home uh, i needed to go to a, a study because yeah that brings income that makes you uh, not depending on anybody else and that was a technical study because yeah art was not uh, not in uh, in uh, line at that moment so i think after in i think in 92 i started painting and then i thought i need to do more so I went to the design academy because, yeah, if you do something, it needs to be useful and art is not useful. At least that was in my mind. I did it also in the evening studies beside my job. And um, but also there, yeah, at a certain moment, it was I could not do it anymore. It was too much. Uh, so I stopped. And then after a while, I did a great workshop in France in uh, Barbouche, uh, just as a holiday. And I thought, yeah, but I need to do something with my hands. I, I really need to do something. So then I started uh, first interior design and then I started uh, art, school, art school, which I graduated, I think now three years ago. Uh, my master is three years ago. So uh, that's where, I, where I'm now. So you really have been right the way around the houses. Yeah. And just looking at the photographs of your work, yeah. you're really um, materials, different materials. Well, I think most of the time I start with materials. Okay. So either I get something or I see something which are really interesting, like the, the touch or the structure. And then my head starts working. What can I make? Or what can what does it mean? Or what 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 does it call for me as a as a material? And do I need to add something? Because I think the mix of the materials is always an added value. So depending on what what material I have, I make something. So you would start with materials or the objects. How does that then relate to memory in your work? because you know, memory would be sort of an underlying theme? Me memory is, for everybody, it's different. But um, you, everybody has a memory. You build it up when you're you, you, you are born. Then you start building up new memories. And I was thinking today, um, because we would have this conversation, that for us, it's very visual at this moment. So everything I make is visual where for me also the, the 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 other senses are very important so if i see a blanket it's it's not only seeing the blanket but it's also the feeling of the blanket and that is 
uh, of course, for everybody different, but that that is then triggering me to make something. I thought, I'm I'm smiling because there there are some pieces of artwork that I look at, and depending on the texture, as I'm looking at it, I'm I stand and do that. <laughs> yeah, because it it just it, it triggers movement because of the texture, and you really want to engage with it. Mm -hmm. Would you be one of the bold ones in a gallery in touch? Uh, no, <laughs> but I have been to an exhibition last week and I got this one <gasps> just to touch. Oh, lovely. That is uh, a wool. Do you know it's from Claudie Jongstra? Uh, she's a big artist here in, uh, in Holland, having her own uh, block. Yeah. Block. Yeah. Block. Dying her own. Uh, wool with the with everything she has in her garden uh, natural dyes uh, one of my friends um has been doing dyeing fabric with leaves from the garden so she uh, steaming them the steam dye method mm -hmm. and wrapping them around uh, a wooden dial tying mm -hmm. them up very tight you know, dipping, first of all dipping the leaves in iron oxide to rusty water and then oh. laying the leaves down in the fabric and rolling them up and she comes out with the most amazing amazing prints i have tried it several times and i cannot get my prints as beautiful as alice's it just she what you make is then also beautiful and that is what i i also um see is of how i work is that you see what happens when you make something and you continue based on what you reached at that point and it's not that everything needs to be as perfect as your friends. Mm -hmm. And so for the glass blowing, I only do it for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And if I go to Andrea, she makes beautiful things. She does, yes. And I just make these stupid things. But they have a feeling. They, they recall something in my mind. And I start working with what I can, and then maybe in a later phase I can do better. But this is what it is at this moment. And I don't want to throw it away because it already has something. Yeah, so you mentioned a really important word there, which is process. Yeah. So the process is the art as well as the outcome to a degree. Yeah. 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 And but there should always be an outcome for me. It's not only the process. If, if the process doesn't bring me anything, I throw it away. So the, the title then for this exhibition is Luckily We Do, we do Not Have to Be Perfect. Mm -hmm. what, what are your thoughts on failure within process then? Yeah, that is a, that is a good question. Um, failure, it, it is then the definition of failure. And so if you break something, yeah, then, then it fails. But sometimes that could also be input for something else. Mm -hmm. And But that's, um, yeah, well, that's my struggle. Because <laughs> I was thinking, and this is where some of our research and work sort of links in together, is that idea of failure and success and value. And what I might consider a success may not be what somebody else would consider um, valuable you know, of a market yeah. value. I'm not looking at market value, but the outcome should have value for me. Yeah. If I would not put it in my, in my room, then it doesn't make sense. Yeah, some things are too big. <laughs> I cannot put them in my room. But if I would have a space like where I could hang it or put it if it's not uh, worse to put it it's, it's and the work is a failure oh yeah failure yeah you you just either make something new of it or yeah one of the things I was reading through some of the um the information that you sent the gallery about yeah. your practice and how you were working and one of the 
questions that I wanted to ask you was whenever you start making and thinking about that idea of failure and perfection, how do you approach making something when there's no guarantees that your outcome is going to be successful? Would you think your way through it and then back away? Or do you carry on and just give it a go anyway and see what happens? Yeah, I give it a go and see what happens. And then because I'm also very lucky that um, for me, it's not my only income. Uh, so if it's if there is a failure, I can still live. Yeah, you've, you've got a bit of wiggle room. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so and, and, and it's also that um, I started making art just because of that, that I can just make it for yourself. For myself so you mentioned somewhere in your uh, mail uh, something about connection making connection to the to the to the people to the visitors yeah but that's not something what i do when i make the work when i, I make the exhibition i do yeah because okay. then you are putting things together and you are going to tell a story which i really hope they like so you had mentioned then that uh, where it comes to the likes of an exhibition, you your favourite part is the work. You wouldn't be quite so enthusiastic about drafting the text to go along with the work for an exhibition. <laughs> that was my challenge, to write the text. So do you still find that a challenge or do you find that a wee bit easier as you've gone along? Um, I think um, I still find it difficult, uh, but maybe that is also uh, because of the history that everybody was always saying that I used the wrong words. I sometimes uh, used the word happy and then they say, oh, an artist should not say happy or nice. <laughs> and then, oh, gee, I'm saying something wrong. Well, for me, it's really coming from my inside. I don't have the other words for it. Is that the, that's one of the things that I think university does is it can teach you that academic language. You know, you maybe have more clever words. Yeah. But do, does that, do you lose your authenticity by using the art speak? And does it give the, the, the work more value if I use the wrong words? Yeah. If I don't use words at all, because I think normally the work should speak for itself. Well, speaking of the work, can I ask you then about uh, some of the work that you have sent over for the exhibition? Yeah. Uh, can I start by asking you about the self-portrait and the yes. photo collage for every seven years? Yeah. Well... My self-portrait was, uh, was an assignment we got at school. Um, we need to make a self-portrait uh, with a collage. And then people start tearing uh, papers and things. And I thought, oh, gee, that's not my thing. Should it look like me? Or what should I do with it? And then I thought at a certain moment, I really like sometimes um, there is a great artist. I don't know his name now who makes photo collages mm -hmm. with uh, material, or with, with objects from his past. Okay. Uh, and then I thought, I can do the same and then tell my story. So that's why I started. Uh, and I thought every seven years, uh, you know, the seven years should change. So seven years was a nice, uh, I, nice to make. And what you see is that um, in this self-portrait, you see a lot of things which were which happened before. But then the, the last one at that moment, 49, was saying something where I would stand at that moment. And you see me head banging. You see on the left side, you see a building which is really straight, structured from my work I do. Mm -hmm. And then on the right side, you see an old building and you see flowers. So you see, that's a struggle I had at that moment, and I still, I still have. But okay, that was the struggle really at that moment. Um, and turquoise is my 
my color. So I, you can see I have uh, objects, but I have many more in the same color. Uh, when this exhibition came up, I thought uh, I need to make one more because the seven years have passed again. So what do I do at this moment? And I had a, I have a break at this moment from my work. Okay. And just before, I think two weeks before I stopped, I went out uh, for a walk and then I thought I make a portrait of myself flying. You wanted to make a collage of yourself flying. Yeah, well, no, I just took that picture. And then afterwards, I thought I need to make a collage because when I took that picture, it was not clear if I would have an exhibition. If you look to the last picture, you can also see the, um, how do you call the stones in the northern part? Oh. Uh, the Giant's Causeway? Yes. That is in the last picture. Humor. You like to inject a bit of humor into your artwork. Yeah. A little bit. So not, not too much, that you just have a smile, but not that you are falling over from laughter. Yeah, but just that, that lightheartedness helps with access to work for people as well, you know, because they can make the connection that wee bit more easily. Yeah. And um, one day at the office, is that one of the pieces that is in the exhibition? Yeah, that will be in the exhibition. Would you like to tell us a little bit about that? Well, one day at the office um, was really one day at the office. <laughs> one of those days at the office where I had to fight all my colleagues, where they say you should not fight, but I do. Um, and they are always overwhelming, want to be on front. Yeah, you, yeah. that is really the, the, yeah, the habit, at least in our uh, company. Um, and those ties I got uh, a while back from somebody and they are really nice fabrics. So I had put something on somewhere. So just that I pass it every day. And when I came back home and I saw that tie after that day, I thought I make a snake of it. I don't need to cut it into pieces. It's just what it needs to be. <laughs> yeah. So that is one day at the office and it helps me at the end of the day. I'm really interested in your whites. Ah, <laughs> my whites. Yeah, all the, all my whites, yeah, that was really, uh, it was a nice project. I thought that was also a commission we, need, we needed to make white. And what is white? What is white for you? What is white for me? And then when you go to the shop, to the paint shop, you see all those different kinds of whites. And I thought, okay, I can do something with that. I can at least start with that. If something else pops up, but it was really, was for me enough because I had so many ideas on white. Um, and then, uh, yeah, the broken white and the old white are really my favorites. The broken white is the one with the eggs. Yes. Yeah. And I made it in a small piece. Mm -hmm. Berlin Apartments, what's that about? I was um, visiting Berlin and then uh, I saw this beautiful building, but it was, and nobody was living in it anymore. And I like, really like the structures. I, I make a lot of pictures of structures. And then I thought I need to do something with this view, but just printing it like it is, is for me not, uh, making an artwork uh, so I thought what does this apartment complex want to tell me and I think every apartment has its own story mm -hmm. that's why I cut the picture in 80 pieces and then shuffled and so it's it's almost the, the the I think it's three windows and I think that would be a room you are a storyteller. In pictures. In pictures. Yeah, in, in objects. And are you telling your story or other people's stories? Up till now, I have been telling my stories. I was never asked to tell somebody else's stories. 
I think it's also very difficult to tell somebody else his story because then you have to get into his mind. Or you should have a very long conversation about uh, what he wants to tell and then find the right materials for him or her. Because you're telling your stories, do you, you feel vulnerable whenever you're showing your artwork? Or are you a step away from it by the time it gets into the gallery? Uh, well, the first time when I showed my self-portrait, I had that feeling. But after that, not more. No, not anymore. No. Because then I think, okay, it is what it is. I have a good feeling because what I, I show is really from my heart and I have a good feeling for it. And the interesting thing was on my exams, we all had our own space mm -hmm. uh, to make something. And then I was sitting on the outside. And then when people were coming out, they were smiling. And that, for me, that was my success. I was the same with my end of year show. I had got some, I had some lovely conversations with people in the exhibition. Oh. And, you know, it just, the cockles of my heart were warmed. Yeah. You have a title which I find quite um, entertaining and also quite relevant because my stepson is getting married next month. Ah. Oops, I think I missed my wedding. <laughs> <laughs> What's that about? <laughs> well, when I was making this, um, it was, it was uh, inspired by... Um, a wedding bouquet. I saw it once in a magazine and it was really nice. And I thought, oh yeah, this and that. And I thought, okay, but I need to give it a title. I've never married. I, I wanted to get married. You know, when you are growing up, you get children, you want to marry. I didn't, none of it. And, 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 and sometimes I really feel sorry for it. But on the other hand, if I would have mar been married, I could not have done what I did up till now. So yeah. that's why I gave it a title. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> and then, please don't hurt me. Just thinking, talking about vulnerability and confessional, yeah. that sounds, you know, like very, a very sensitive title. It is. When I, I was, uh, was working on that one, uh, although it's inspired on a, on a chestnut I got from somebody, it is, when I was making it, it was really like, oh yeah, you, I keep everybody on the outside so that they cannot hurt me. But if you see the dress on the inside, it's very soft. Well, I was looking at it and it sort of reminded me of a mix up between a wedding dress and Little Red Riding Hood's cloak. And for me, it was not a not nothing to do with wedding dresses. It was more like I like dresses, <laughs> you know, the fabrics. Yeah. And um, and then I just I, I had the glass. I had bought the glass because I really liked the red one. So I started making uh, spines of it, and then thought, okay, how do I do it? Would other fabric would fit on it one? Mm -hmm. So it's more. That is the growing part. And then the title comes afterwards. Do the garments fit you? Yeah. And just out of curiosity, would you ever wear them in performance work at all? Uh, yeah. I was, there was an, uh, an exhibition um, last year where I sent my dress and it was not accepted. And I would, I thought it would fit really into the, in the, into the, the subject, but it was not accepted. And then I thought when the opening would be, I will go to the opening and wear that dress. <laughs> but you know, there was no opening last uh, year. <laughs> yeah. Because it was last year. Yeah. You mentioned about the glass making. Yeah. So one of the pieces in the exhibition the, the glass was made or blown up with um, Andrea Spencer up on the North Coast. Is that correct? Uh, no, I learned it over there, but oh, I can right. do it at home. So this is the Feeling Blue one that... Yeah, the Feeling Blue was, uh, yeah, that was the first one. 
but I made one special for the exhibition, um, which is then more inspired of the on the work I did with uh, Andrea. Right. Um, and that is the one. Luckily, we do not have to be perfect. And it's just one of my starting pieces. Uh, when you start blowing, you can make those pieces. And I thought, but the shape is really nice. So what do I do with it? And I thought, okay, it's like, if we do not have to be perfect and they are already nice, I fill them with um, uh, um, what, uh, uh, graffiti, your, your, what you have in your pencils, in your- Graphite? Yeah, graphite. I filled them with graphite to make them uh, not uh, transparent anymore. Mm -hmm. And I added rubber as uh, to make a string like you are in a lab. Yeah, so it and it all has a number. So it's more like yeah, you see, everybody is unique. Uh, nothing is perfect. This is what it is. I started that one uh, because I wanted to make something big. Uh, at okay. least bigger than the, the normal things I have in my house. And it was uh, COVID and I feel lonely. And yeah. uh, I had this uh, fabric uh, and I thought, let me make an icy house. It's really the white fabric, uh, like icy feeling uh, fabric. So I cut the piece I had into bricks, glue, glue it all, not glue, uh, uh, sew it all together. And then, uh, of course, I did not have enough. Um, so I ended it up with uh, red fabric at the bottom because I found red fabric, which I really, really liked. So it started telling a little bit a different story. Mm -hmm. So it was the house, but it was a house in pain. And it could walk and it has a long, long leg, which is not perfect. Eh? So it's, it's not a perfect house. And then I thought, how am I going to ship this? How, not, not ship, but how am I going to fill this one? Because it, it's huge. And if you have to store it somewhere. Mm -hmm. So it was lying somewhere in a corner for a while. And then at a certain moment, I thought it needs to be a marionette. Because that is what is happening. We are lived so by the day. Everybody's saying you need to do this, you need to do that, and you are bungling like this. Mm -hmm. You need to go there and there, and you're yeah. sitting well, behind your laptop in a Zoom meeting. All, all monitored and controlled by people who were not even sure if they know what they're doing. Yeah. Well, but then, then I, when I was working on that one, that is really building. So it happens. So you do this, then you do that, and then it starts working, then it lies in the corner. You need to do something and at the end. The, the red part on the bottom, uh, it was, of course, it was open because I had to go inside to make the, the marionette in it. And then I thought, it's just a mouth. It's, it's <laughs> telling me I need to do something. So I didn't really close it. I just made it nicer, but it's like. Well, I'm gonna wrap this conversation up now. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me this evening. It has been a pleasure you do. hearing more about your work. Nice uh, meeting. Hopefully we can get another catch up soon. Yeah, okay, okay. great. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm.